What's going on YouTube? It's your guy, Kent Hollywood Matzinger. We're back at it and we got Terry. Hey dudes. So this is our first episode. We teased it a little bit during one of the toy hunts I was doing. And this is Figure It Out with Kent, with Terry. And uh, you all were awesome enough to send us a few questions. Yeah. And we're gonna go through those questions before we hit your questions. Cause you know, it's all about me and being a better poser and all that good stuff in 2020. I'm gonna ask the first question. Uh, I tend to get this with my collection videos. And my question for Terry, what is the greatest number of figures? So how many figures quantity wise have you posed in a single session? And do you have any pointers for people that might have large collections okay so it's yeah that's a question in two or three parts two questions that's fine yeah the, uh, the largest number of figures that I've ever posed for a single session now that's 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 hard that's a hard one to answer right away uh, first of all the most numbers the, the most number that I've done any amount of posing with at all in a single session is, was for a photograph that I did that was inspired by and basically directly replicates a fantastic painting by Alex Ross called Empire of Style. It's a, it's a fairly well-known painting featuring Darth Vader with his lightsaber lit in the foreground and he's flanked and backed up by a variety of different Imperial troops. Um, I can't remember the exact number off the top of my head, but I want to say it was something like 27 or 28 figures for one that I had to cram into one photograph and it took me Actually, way less time than I thought it would. I thought it was going to take like a day or two, a full day or two, but I want to say I got it all done in like half a day. And uh, tell them where they can check out that uh, that photo. If you go to my um, my Instagram, uh, Posemaster underscore General, um, then you'll see a version of it there. Um, it's also popped up on my Facebook page if you have access to it, which not many people do. I'm <coughs> I mean, a thousand people or so do. I don't know. <laughs> I've, I've lost count. But um, yeah, that's you can just see it there. And uh, again, not to brag, uh, collectors that might have uh, quite a few uh, figures, like eleven hundred figures. Yeah. It's it's crazy. Yeah. Any uh, any pointers? Any yes. strategies for uh, for those large collections? Yes, absolutely. Um, of course, everybody's needs are going to be specific to their environment and uh, and their limitations that, are, that, that that environment provides. So depending on, in other words, however much space that you have to display these things is going to go a long way towards informing what you can what you can do with all those figures that you have. Uh, so if you're kind of limited on space, if let's say that you have enough space on your shelves to hold 1,100 figures, but only barely then museum poses are the way to go. Just nice, static, standing poses. But there are things that you can do to enhance that. Um, when when people, when you or I stand on a street corner or in a room and just like casually standing there, you're not standing in a way that mimics the way an action figure looks in a box. Correct. So if the figure is well designed enough to have plenty of points of articulation and uh, maximize uh, range of motion, which range of motion isn't even an issue in standing poses. Yeah. But uh, you should be able to make minor adjustments to pretty much every single one of those points of articulation in such a way that your figure looks like it's standing naturally the way a human or humanoid character would. So if space is an issue, then and you want to get as many figures onto the shelf as possible, then keep that in mind, that your best bet is going to stay away from action, fo action poses action poses have a much larger footprint and you're going to have to make sacrifices. And that's kind of what I share with people. Um, when you're thinking about your collection, if you're thinking about posing, uh, it's all about the real estate. And then I think after the real estate, it's really the time, uh, the time you put in it to it. Uh, yes. And uh, 
start off with that awesome figure that maybe highlights, catches uh, yes. the point, and then just work around there to uh, complete your figures. Uh, one thing I think of kind of those Spider-Man covers where you kind of got Spider-Man, but then there's all the villains around him and stuff. Yeah. So try to find that inspiration and uh, put together what uh, what you find exciting in your collection. Yeah, determine what your centerpiece is gonna be. Like in my earlier answer, I talked about three dimensions. Yeah. Basically, but you're talking about a fourth dimension, which is time. Um, like I was mentioning to you in an earlier conversation, 1,100 figures. If you decided that you wanted to pose all of them, and you have work to cons you have work limitations to consider, you're going to be at work eight hours a day plus your commute. Right. Uh, you're going to have to watch Mandalorian. You're going to have to um, <laughs> cook dinner. You know, make yourself breakfast, walk the dog. All the demands in your time are going to limit the amount of time you have each day to pose a figure. So let's just say, for the sake of argument, that you posed three of your figures a day. It would take you an entire year to pose right. your entire collection. That's an entire year gone from your life. If you're, <laughs> if you're willing to sacrifice that amount of time for the sake of properly posing a figure, and by properly, I mean the limitations that are placed upon you by your, your viewing public, for instance, you know, or, or trolls, if you will. People who have nothing better to do than criticize you for, the, for your posing or lack thereof in your collection. All right, you know, let's just say that you decide to meet the demands. You just lost a year from your life. I don't know about you guys, but there might be better things you can do with a year of your life. I don't know. Um, but if that's your thing, then also so be it. I've spent so much time posing figures. God, now I'm scared. I, I don't know if I want to start thinking about just how much time <laughs> of my life I've been posing figures. Anyway, but yeah, anyway, next question. And none of the trolls talk about how uh, consistent I am. I, I might be the best vanilla poser on <laughs> YouTube. So, I'm going to uh, nominate you as like, best vanilla comment. poser, or at least the coolest vanilla poser on YouTube. Yeah. Okay, so now that my question's been answered, let's get on to your questions. And I want to thank everybody that took the time to post a question. Uh, as you're watching this week's episode, I don't know how soon we'll have another figure it out, but uh, you put some good questions and uh, we'll get another figure it out episode out there. So first up, do you collect DC figures? That's from We Rage. Yeah, man. Nintendo all the way. Um, yes and no. I don't focus on DC, um, but I have some DC. Uh, God, okay, where to, where to, how to go with this? I have virtually the entire Justice League movie lineup uh, from Hot Toys, or at least I will have. I don't have Batman yet, and the Superman version I have is actually from Man of Steel, which is a nice. look that I, which is a look that I prefer. Um, so. Yeah, I guess you could say that I collect them because I, because they're in my possession. I haven't sold them. At this time, they're not on display. They're boxed up and, um, and, in, sto and in storage in a, in a closet. Um, I also have a series of premium format figures from Sideshow. I've got uh, their Aquaman. I've got both Green Lantern premium formats. Not the John Stewart one, but both Hal Jordan Green, uh, Green Lantern PFs. I've got a Wonder Woman premium format. Um, don't have a Superman. I was supposed to have a Batman. And I had arranged a trade for that, and the person who I arranged the trade with took the figure that I traded to her and kept it, and she never gave me the Batman premium format. She's a pretty noted figure in the collecting community, <laughs> but, uh, and I'm not going to say her name. But Never uh, forget. Yeah, I will never forget. You know who you are. Um, yeah, I think that's about the gist of it. Yeah. I have one or two 12-scale um, figures that I've picked up just because I was like, oh, that looked cool. Black Manta. Oh, I, mean, very I cool, freaking yeah. love Black Manta. My, oh, if I were to round out my top three favorite DC villains, it would be Deathstroke at the top of the line. I like some Deathstroke. Black Manta and Captain Cold. I've actually done a Captain Cold um, custom figure. Oh, nice. Yeah, I did, um, I, because Hot Toys years ago did a, 
did a series of figures from Prison Break. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 And so I can't remember the actor's name off the top of my head. Do you remember who that? Um, I should know. Yeah, I should too. Com post in the comments below if you know. I'm sure yeah, that by the time that happens, knows. though, I will have figured it out. Everybody knows who it is. Yeah, but uh, but I, I scored, I found on eBay, when I had the idea was when I was working at Sideshow and I had an extra Hoth um, Han. I want to say Wetworth for some reason. But Sam, Wh Sam Whitworth. When, no, <laughs> Sam, Sam Whitworth is who I'm uh, thinking of. That's, uh, that's the guy that plays Darth Maul. But I had an extra Hoth Han jacket, blue, the blue version from Sides, oh, and I was like, cool. yeah. I think this is a good foundation for a figure. And then I remembered the Prison Break series. Right. So I, I went on to YouTube, and for like a song, for like nothing, I picked up this uh, this Prison Break <laughs> figure. And just decapitated him and threw that head onto a different, onto a Hot Toys body, different Hot Toys body, and uh, threw, kind of sought out, I think I used like some pants from Logan. Nice. From, uh, from Wolverine. And I found a I found a woolly pulley, a black woolly pulley, to serve as a, just use some generic boots. I think uh, had hands from um, Red Skull, a Hot Toys Red Skull, and just just did a kit bash, just did a quick kit bash, and uh, it looks great. Tight. I found uh, somebody who uh, had a 3D printer who uh, sculpted and 3D printed a uh, a cold gun. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Still got that somewhere. It's uh, I'm probably going to get fired from Sideshow for talking about this thing. I know the Sideshow just does not like that kind of thing. But, you know, it was all just parts that I had laying around. I, I'm not selling it. Um, you know, Sideshow, whatever. your ads were playing before this video started. <laughs> so we're all good. Yeah, Come on. Yeah, we're all good. Yeah. All right. Uh, so DC. Uh, DC figures are actually my hot toy collection. Um, I have... So we probably all, have some of the same stuff. I have all of the Heath Ledger Jokers. Oh, no, we and don't. That we have is, uh, different. That is my Hot Toys collection. Uh, I have both of the DX Jokers. So I have uh, the Dark Knight Joker, the Joker as the police officer, That's the a great DX 11 Joker with the interrogation room, uh, Dio. And then I also have the bank robber Joker. So I'm a huge fan of Heath Ledger as the Joker. Maybe that's part of the reason I haven't seen the new Joker movie yet. He is my Joker. And uh, I just, that character and I'll, I'll admit it. I was probably one of the biggest doubters about Heath Ledger. And then I saw that performance as the Joker and I- I never, never doubted. Never question it again. Yeah, I never doubted. But that uh, that would be my DC collection. And uh, so a further dive, our next question is the new DC Multiverse line. These are seven inch figures by McFarlane Toys. And have we seen them? Are we going to collect them? The uh, By Eric Hinky. I hope I'm saying that name right, Eric. I I knew I knew a Hinky years ago. In fact, oh, we, Eric's cool. We've had coffee with him before. Oh, Eric. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, what's up, Eric? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I hope I hope I got the hope we got got your the pronunciation of your last <laughs> name right, Eric. Yeah. I used to date a girl named Hinky back in the day, man. She was. Uh, oh, I was so in love with her. Oh my God, I just head over heels. But anyway, back to back to toys. Um, I'm not familiar. But I can guess. Yeah, they're uh, brand new uh, McFarlane. In fact, uh, we're filming. It's probably like January 10th. I just saw them in stores this morning. Uh, DC Multiverse. So we're getting some animated series. We're getting some yeah. comic. We're getting some movies. Uh, I think the figures look good. I haven't had an opportunity to really see them out of box as far as articulation. Uh, with them being a little taller, I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm having this debate where I'm telling myself maybe I can just pick up the animated Superman, the animated Batman, and call it quits. But yeah, good luck with that. Right, that's that's how it starts. Yeah. That's how it starts. Rabbit hole, man. I um. So we're talking animated. They're doing the animated. Are they also doing the multiverse thing? To me, suggested the notion that it's um, 
it's all about like Earth Two, Earth Three, or this. Um, so know, basically, they open up. Uh, with it being multiverse, it opens up the possibility of any DC license. Okay. So you could have. Uh, I believe they have Harley Quinn from the new uh, Birds of Prey as one of the figures. So um, they have. Uh, you mentioned. Uh, John Stewart, uh, Green Lantern from, I believe, from the uh, Justice League animated series. Okay. So, basically, uh, they find those figures that uh, everybody enjoyed, and they're just going to put them out there. All right. I and there's it. so yeah. many already, like... Yeah, I wish that I had, um, at this point, for the most part, my collection is pretty strictly limited to Star Wars. I do have quite a few other DC properties um, that already exist in my collection, but I'm not looking to add more. Um, same thing holds true for uh, for Marvel. I have a pretty extensive Marvel statue collection, and I have a very extensive Hot Toys Iron Man collection. But uh, again, I'm not going to be adding any more to those. In fact, Star Wars is probably getting ready to wind up as well. I need to, <laughs> I, I need to draw the line at some point. I don't have limitless space. Next question. Next question. Do you pose Marvel Legends and Black Series figures? Is that from Glue Sniffer? I believe that's from Glue Sniffer. I think Glue that's from Sniffer. Glue Sniffer. What's up, Glue Sniffer? Um, Black Series, yeah. I used to pose those things like crazy uh, back in the day, um, especially when they first became a thing. Uh, in fact, I um, I actually remember looking at the, um, at the photos that Hasbro was taking of the Black Series oh, figures at that cool. time and thinking, why am I not doing this for them? <laughs> Hasbro, I, I think, uh, if you need our yeah. help, uh, we're, we're a message away. Yeah, I think I considered reaching out at the time, but I didn't. I, uh, I just let it go. I was like, eh, whatever. And they, they're doing fine now. I, um, I haven't seen anything so egregious that, uh, <laughs> that, um, that I thought about that I might be useful to them. Um, plenty of great posers out there. So Marvel Legends, apparently, though, apparently I will be. I haven't, but apparently I'm going to soon. Stay tuned. Uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll definitely uh, we'll definitely get Terry posing some Marvel Legends. Uh, obviously, if you've seen any of my videos, I think that was more of a question for Terry. Uh, definitely got plenty of the Marvel Legends. Uh, maybe it's a little bit of trolling. Maybe uh, maybe they want to see me do more than my vanilla posing. So oh, definitely stay burn, tuned. Bro. We'll uh, we'll get uh, Terry in the toy room. We'll uh, we'll play around with some Marvel Legends and. Uh, Again, Hasbro, uh, just uh, send us a message. We'll uh, we'll put some stuff together for you. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, the fact is, is that yeah, while I am aware of a lot of these toy lines, I don't I don't have the financial resources to buy them all. Um, and so I've seen Marvel Legends, and I've been curious about them. I've been curious about their posability. So I'm genuinely looking forward to having the opportunity, without having to pay for it, to to play with these things. So yeah. And uh, I would say Black Series, as far as when I used to collect them, uh, mostly troops and stuff. So it was probably heroes versus troops and kind of line in my stormtroopers and different uh, first order troopers, kind of like my Hydra, Hydra army. So very uh, in rank, all that fun stuff. They look strikingly good together when you do that. There's a reason people army build, and it's not just because they can, it's because it looks cool. Oh yeah. yeah. All right, and then our last question comes from Knight of Wren. Yeah, Knight of Wren, what's Where up? Where do you draw inspiration for posing figures? I just look at myself in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, the biggest part of ins my inspiration for posing um, has always, always come from my background in reading comic books. Um, just having had a fascination with comic book and comic book artists from the 80s and the early 90s, which was the heyday of my comic book collecting, um, I think it's safe to say that that's where the bulk of my inspiration or my understanding of, of posing uh, stems from. I just have saturated my brain with so much imagery from comic books that the, uh, there's an understanding of it there. Um, whether it's successful or not is there's that, that depends on someone's point of view. You know, if, I've actually had someone post to one of my videos here. I, I don't 
and I think he was from English was like a second language for him, obviously. Okay. But I think the words that he used were, "I don't think you have the art of posing." Mm. Okay, um, I don't either. I <laughs> just do is, it. Uh, is that like the art of war? Is there a book, the art of posing? Maybe, maybe there should be. <laughs> Stay tuned, Ken Stay tuned. Terry's art of posing yeah. book. Anyway, but I, I hope that answers the question. Um, I've I've been stumped a time or two when I was on when I was doing shoots on assignment, and um, I've had to just Google images of the character and find you're, you're bound to find just scores of images of Darth Vader um, that either by artists or stills from the films or what have you that are going to meet your needs. So, but if you were to ask me to nail it down to one source, then yeah, I would say definitely comic book art. And uh, I would just say there is a lot of inspiration out there, whether it's the comics, cartoons, movies, but uh, don't uh, don't limit yourself by uh, what's already been done. Um, MCU characters, you know, sometimes it's fun to put them in different scenes and stuff from the movies, but you know, if your imagination's there, there's something fun that you enjoy, uh, go ahead and set it up and see if it works for you, if it works for your collection, and share it. Uh, I know everybody loves seeing those Instagram pictures, those YouTube videos, so. Yeah, exactly, and I think I think something else that should be brought up and shouldn't be discounted for my own posing the um, is the impact of um, classical figure posing, classical figure sculpture. Um, when it comes to some of the principles that I employ when I'm, when I'm doing museum poses, a lot of that comes from that area of art. Uh, so, you know, go to your local museum and just check out some of the classical sculptures that you see there and just um, take note of the way that different uh, body parts are, are posed and their relationship to each other. Uh, the hips, don't just look at the legs and the head, um, just look at the way the hips are cocked and the way that the torso is articulated. And just, uh, and take, it, take inspiration from that and I think you'll be able to bring a little bit more life to your museum poses or your basic standing poses. Well we uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you want more of Kent and Terry figure it out, go ahead and leave us a question in the comment. We might not have all the answers but uh, together we'll figure it out. <laughs>